Hi everyone, it's Tanya Gibbs and today I am going to share an art journal tutorial. This is an Yvonne Blair Art Girls project and today's uh, feature is Advice from a Tree. This is a quote that I found over on Pinterest and uh, today I am going to feature these products from Yvonne Blair. This is the palm tree stamp that is hers with uh, Impression Obsession as well as her 4x8 art journal and uh, the products that I'm using today are available in some of your local retail stores but I will also include a blog post where you can find these online as well so uh, make sure you check out the description box down below you can hit the show more and there will be some links down in there so let's go ahead and get started this art journal is made with manila cardstock and I really love it because it lays completely flat when I'm working on it. Uh, I am prepping the pages with some matte medium and then I'm taking some tissue paper that just is going to offer a really nice uh, just texture in the background with some book test text uh, type stamping there in the back. I'm just going to rip that into random pieces and then add that to the surface using the matte medium. I'm going to make sure that I do not have any exposed areas across the center of my uh, gutter there so that uh, none of my mediums seep through to any of the other pages. So I do want to make sure that I seal over the top and I'm very careful not to leave any bubbles on any of these pages. You guys have seen me do this a million times so I'm going to try and hurry through this process. Um, as you see me lifting up the pages, I'm making sure that I leave that crease there in the center of my gutter so that uh, my book will open and close very easily once it's dry. I don't want this to be too firm laid completely flat because I do want it to be able to close easily. Once my page is completely dry, I am going to come back with my Distress Paints and I'm going to begin to paint my uh, background. I've chosen the Distress Paints from Tim Holtz today for a couple of reasons. One, they are slow to dry so I can work with them and build layers. The second reason is once they're dry they're completely permanent so I don't have to worry about them becoming muddy. Now as you're working with these you do not want to squeeze those bottles too heavily because the paint will, the pressure inside the bottle will cause those tops to pop off and you'll have a mess so be very careful. Uh, now, because I'm working with a warm color and a cool color, I'm going to make sure that uh, these two colors do not over mix or I will be begin to get mud. The first color that I worked with there is the spun sugar and the second color is broken china. So what I've done is I've put the spun sugar down first. I've worked it into the background. It's barely visible but it is there and it does offer a nice soft pink. The top color is the spun or the broken china and then I came back with the salty ocean and it just to add a little dark, darker tone. I'm leaving it blotchy because I want the little hints of the green as well as the blues. And then I'm coming back in with a little bit of uh, the ripe persimmon on top of the pink. Uh, the ripe persimmon does end up covering up the pink altogether. But down in the bottom lower left hand corners I can still see even on the final piece I can see touches of the pink. So it's hard to see in video but you do get in some some of these negative places where the oranges don't touch you do get a little hint of the pink here and there. Now the yellow that I'm coming in with now is the mustard seed. Remember that as these colors dry they dry completely permanent but I do want to be very careful while I'm working with them that I do not over mix because some of these warmer colors as they touch um, the cooler colors like the blues I could end up with mud or in this case with the yellow and the blue I could end up with green and that's not the color that I'm after so you'll notice that I'm pulling out my heat gun and I'm going to start to dry um, so be very careful working with these colors your sunsets could become 
So now it's time for me to begin to work with my uh, stamps. Now I will confess I am a little stamping challenge, especially with some of these larger stamps. I'm leaving in some of uh, my mistakes here because I want to show you what I'm doing wrong. For starters, my table is the wrong kind of table to stamp on. You should always pull out something that's firm. My table is plastic and it collapses in the center. Um, because uh, it doesn't have enough pressure so you should always pull out a wooden surface to stamp on that's part of why I'm stamping challenged um, on these uh, fine detailed stamps like this add a lot of pressure in the center but you do want to make sure you're pressing onto a firm surface uh, finally got me a, myself a good uh, impression there so I wanted to stamp three really good palm trees. This stamp is a really good size, as you'll see whenever I pull my book out. So I really only needed three. Once you get three clear images, you want to trim out around the edges. For my stamping, because I'm going to be using some wet mediums over the top, I am suggesting that you use a stamp. Uh, ink that is permanent. I'm using archival ink and this is the coffee ink from Ranger. Uh, and it's or no this is CPS but any brown ink would do you could even use black if you prefer because by the time I'm finished painting over the top you can't even see it but I'm using Rangers archival ink so for the top of my palm tree fronds of uh, the first base coat I'm using mowed lawn as my uh, color this is again this distress ink and I'm just painting right over the top uh, I was I only painted the back of one of these and then I realized I'm going to glue them completely flat. I wasn't sure at first. But you want to go ahead and add a complete layer of paint over the top of every one of the palm trees. I'm only going to color one palm tree completely, um, figuring that we're going to color them all the same. So there's no point in you seeing me do that in video. The next step on the palm tree is I want to let that color completely dry because like I said, as we build layers one on top of the other, we don't want things to mix. So I'm going to pull out my heat gun and I'm going to set this color really well. Like I said, once this is dry, it's completely set and I don't have to worry about the color moving again. Then I'm going to pull out my Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft uh, colors and I'm going to pull out the May Green number 170. Now remember with these pens this uh, ink is actually movable until it is dry. So I'm going to just follow the lines that have been given by uh, Yvonne and I am going to scribble some ink on and then just take my finger and work it in. Then I'm going to come back with the darker green which is a chromium green opaque 174 and I'm going to trace over the lines that were given by the stamp and put back in the details of the palm fronds and this is going to really give my tree some life and some depth. So now I've pulled in some shadows uh, from the palms for the stem or for the base of my uh, tree trunk, I'm coming back with the distress ink and the walnut stain, and I'm going to paint that up. And then to add the tree trunk, I'm going to just pull out any of the darker brown uh, Faber pens that you have. This is dark sepia 175, and only paint down one side of your. Um, tree trunk and then using the same pen I'm just putting in a few little circles there in the center of my palm tree to just give it some coconuts and so now it's time for me to add my tree to the center of my um, book so I'm going to add the spine first and I'm only adding gel medium there in the center and then I'm going to use my bone folder to add the crease in and then add my gel medium right on top um, I'm leaving some of the palm fronds from uh, having any gel medium underneath until I get all three trees in place and then I'll come back and add some gel medium to glue them all down. I do like for my book to stay somewhat flat so I don't want to add too much dimension here. These will become bulky enough just by adding these layers of paper on top. So uh, I want to make sure that there's good coverage of glue here because I don't want them to peel up over time. But by adding the palm fronds some on top of the other and layering them, I'll be able to add some depth of field to these as well later on with some shadowing. So I want to make sure there's some good coverage there 
after I get all of the gel medium in place and I've allowed this to dry really well and cure, then I can come back with my gel pen and start adding some shadows and highlights. So now it's time to add some really nice shadows and highlights to this piece and really help it to pop and give some richness. So under the trees I added Earth Green 172 which is a really nice uh, soft grayish green to just the edges of the tree and underneath the uh, tree branches. And then in the sky and then again all over the under the, the trees in the yellows I've added the cadmium yellow 107 and that's going to really pop those highlights and and really add that burst of sunshine coming in around my tree uh, and I'm using my uh, baby wipe to kind of blend that around now uh, in the sky area I'm adding some turquoise uh, cobalt, excuse me, light cobalt turquoise 154 and uh, blending that in and around. Now make sure when you blend that you don't use the same wipe or finger as you did with the yellow or you will get green. Now I've come back in with my white marker and I'm adding in some clouds and that's just going to give it a depth of field. So that's white 101. Uh, so now it's time to start adding my text and my uh, black marker from Faber-Castellis just doesn't have that chiseled edge on it that I wanted. So I've reached for a Sharpie king size marker. This is a permanent marker and it has a really nice thick chiseled edge. So uh, I'm going to write the word tree first because that's the last word that I want and I don't want to run out of space. Then I'm going to allow that to dry really well because I don't want to run my hand across the side. And then I'm going to hit it with that heat gun just to make sure it's really good and dry and test it first before you run your hand across. And then I'm going to write the word advice at the top. And then what that's going to allow me to do is give myself that letter spacing that I need for the center words because I can always make those a little bit smaller and those words are from a. So it says advice from a tree. Now if you're not comfortable with your own handwriting you could always pull out some stencils or chipboard letters or stickers or any of that kind of thing, stamps. But this is a journal page and I like to use my own handwriting. It's a great practice area for me. Uh, but you know that's that's me. So I'm going to use my favorite Castell pen and go in and fill in all of those areas that I think are kind of rough on the edges and just kind of smooth them out a little bit. And then I'm going to come back in with the gel pen and add some highlights to those areas. So for my quote area over on the right, I'm going to use a Uniball Jet Set 101.0. I love this pen. I love, love, love this pen. Can, can I say that again? I love this pen. It's permanent. I don't have to worry about it smearing. But here's the downside. On top of gel medium, you have to make sure the gel medium has had time to cure or you're going to have a difficult time writing on it. So you do want to let it sit for a little while um, if you're going to do a heavy, if you're a heavy journaler. So just know that going into it, let it sit overnight, let it do its thing, whatever that thing is. <laughs> so um, now I'm going to come back with my white gel pen and I'm just going to add some highlights over these heavier letters. It just kind of helps to break them up and give them some interest, give them some depth of field. Um, I'm not necessarily the best person at doing this. Uh, if you want some really great people to follow that are really fantastic at this. Vicki Clips and Cuts is very good at this. Oh my goodness, she's so good at this. So um, is Christina Warner. Fantastic at this. Um, there's probably lots of other people, but those are the two like gurus as far as I'm concerned. So now I'm just going to go back in and add some highlights to the top of my tree. This is going to give it another area of dimension. Uh, I could literally take this white gel pen and scribble all over this page and never call it done. Um, seriously, my favorite thing to do. Um, I love this gel pen. This is the Jelly Roll gel pen favorite white gel pen of all times favorite and again if you are having trouble with your gel pens not writing on top of your journal pages nine times out of ten it is because the gel medium or the acrylic paint that you're trying to write on top of has not dried 
Now this is a Sharpie. The first time I tried to use the Sharpie would not work. This is a good 24 hours later and the Sharpie is writing. I felt like while I did love the Uniball pen, it wasn't bold enough. It needed to be a little bit bolder. So I'm just going to trace over where I wrote on it with the Sharpie. And I think I like it better because it's just a little bit, has a little bit more pow. So, um, yeah, that's what journal pages are about. It's just getting in here and playing. And I could literally do this for hours. So then I decided to come back in with the Scarlet red 118 uh, and add a few more little splotches of red and some fire in my trees I just need they just needed a little more pow um, a little bit more sunshine uh, and, and I really love this like I said this is what I call here in the south we call this piddling I could piddle for hours in a journal page um, I, I'm never done in fact things I've already showed you guys on video I probably go back and readdress over and over again because I feel like that's what art journal books are about or they're never really finished they're just you know finished for the public but here is my um, kind of view at this point so now I'm going to come back in with another gray and add just a few more shadows under my tree I felt like they just needed a little more this is a cold gray 4233 so um, yeah just adding a few more shadows I don't think I'm ever really done but I really think this is sound advice so for you guys who uh, didn't get the quote this is stand tall and proud go out on a limb remember your roots drink plenty of water be content with your natural beauty and enjoy the view and I think this is pretty sound advice from a tree so every time you walk by a tree think about this for just a minute I think this is the best advice anyone should ever have uh, here I go adding a few more shadows around my um, title just to give it a little depth as well uh, so this is my project for today thank you guys so much for hanging out with me as you can tell just adding some shadows and highlights to that tree just really gave it a lot of life um, I have another idea for that little tree that I'm going to share with you guys in a later post, so hang tight. Um, if you decide to do something with this tree, if you have it in your stash already, um, I want you to hashtag YB Palm Tree in your social media feeds and then uh, share it with me so I can see what you guys are doing with this palm tree. Also, if you try any of these techniques and you are following me hashtag follow Tanya Gibbs following Tanya Gibbs and share it with me if you've enjoyed this video and uh, you really like the things that you see here on my channel I hope that you share these with a friend and leave me a comment and let me know what you're thinking thanks